Welcome everyone, this is Dom, for another episode of Kerbal Realism. It's been a while since I've recorded on here, which is actually a good thing, because I've been planning this mission uh, off and on for quite a while. So let's just go ahead and lift off. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> so, uh, what would you guys, I bet you guys are wondering what this mission's all about. Oop, I did not mean to tip over a little bit. Uh, as you can tell, though, this rocket is very, very large, has lots and lots of power behind it, and at launch, actually, we're gaining Delta V, so uh, I think our total Delta V estimated was upwards of 8,200 meters per second, so 8.2 kilometers per second of Delta V, which is amazing. So this rocket is going to Duna. This is our Duna launch window right there. We're going a little bit too fast. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Going a little bit too fast. This is our Duna launch window. Five days, 20 hours, 14 minutes. Okay, there goes those. I'm just gonna go ahead and punch it. Might as well. Cool. So, um, five days. This thing will, uh, is our launch window. So I'm, I'm basically launching early. Uh, that's kind of what's going on right now with this. Uh, above, in the fairing up here, is our, what is that thing called? Is our probe. Actually, we're bringing probes to Duna, and we'll get to see what they look like fairly shortly. My drink's in the way of the screen. Cool. I'm just gonna pick up our Apple apps here, slowly tip over. I'm worried about my inclination changing a little bit. That's a a little bit of a worry because we're going to use our Kerbin orbit to uh, satisfy our uh, injection into Duna. So the orbit, we're just going to expand. So any little mistake here will be amplified when we try to expand our orbit to Duna. And boom. Okay, cool. So this thing is just going to float out. There's a lot of little things that I have to do in this very particular amount of time. I didn't move uh, this node here to de do our get rid of our fairings, so I could do that. Um, this is our orbital injection stage. It takes quite a while. I have tested this uh, just to get it into orbit and just to see if there was enough delta V to get us to uh, Duna. And since we are launching preemptively, uh, there is uh, we actually are going to require just a little bit more uh, Delta V to get there. So I think it's upwards of 100 or 200 Delta V. It's not that bad. Cool. And let's get rid of the fairings now. There we go. There's a little couple things that I have to worry about in the next few seconds. First of all, I want to get my antennas down. And at least one of them running. No. Okay, actually, we're going to punch it. Hey! My phone. I love that ringtone. Or that uh, notification sound. Navi. Okay. We're just going to bring ourselves and get ourselves a nice stable round orbit. So we'll want to make uh, about 75, 76. We'll see. This is uh, going to be a little bit touch and go for a while here. Because I think I burned a little bit too late trying to get that antenna out. Yep, just a little bit. Let's see what I can do. Don't fall. Don't fall. Tip up, tip up, tip up. And, yeah, this is not the most efficient way to do things, but it's working, I think. <sighs> come on. Come on. You can get there. And just about now. No. Okay. There it goes. Try, I was trying to uh, catch up. 
to actually move my Apple Apsis ahead of me just because I don't like it to be behind me so I'm not falling the whole time. I like to be increasing my altitude uh, gradually while doing a circularization burn. Sorry, I'm trying to stay directly in front of the microphone but I kind of have to look around it sometimes <laughs> see the screen. It's fairly large. And uh, it's on its own stand, so it has to kind of sit in front of me because I don't have a nice stand or anything to make it hover in place. And if I leave it on the desk, the microphone, uh, you pick up all of my mouse movements and it's big thuds and stuff. So didn't want to attribute you guys to that. So anyways, uh, as we make this burn here, uh, we will be circularizing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what this whole probe up top is. It's actually multiple probes. I, uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, cluster cluster things. For example, like the the uh, what, what where did we go to? I think it was Minmus. Yes, the big Minmus cluster we brought up and landed all different all separate landings all at once, and we all came back. I think that was on this series or this. I don't know. I don't remember anymore. All I know is that it was one of my favorite missions that I've ever done. So I'm bringing up a cluster of probes to Duna, and we're going to explain what all of them do in a few seconds here, as soon as this gets rounded. There we go. Nice round, low, low orbit with an inclination of 0.12 degrees, which is basically perfect for me for intersecting Duna. So here we are, very, very low part count. Uh, I don't want anything too fancy to go to Duna just yet. We might actually send a separate mission other than this one up to Duna. This one doesn't have very much science on it, so that's mostly the reason. And I'm expecting a lot of these things to fail. So, <laughs> uh, we might have to send up a, a second mission of just in case some of these things don't work. Um, okay, top of the... let's see if I can get... there we go. Offset view here. Top of the probes uh, is... There's a main core, it's right here, it has all this monopropellant and a uh, big antenna dish right here, which we're going to point towards Kerbin. And uh, that and big antenna that I extended has a 5 million meter range, which is really, really crazy. Basically, it can reach, um, let's go ahead and just jump into the map so I can show you. These... Uh, Mission control. These uh, geostationary satellites are 2.8 million meters away, so it can reach out to you know, I don't even know, like probably around here, um, in this area range, uh, just with that one antenna. And it's omnidirectional, so you don't need to point it anywhere. So, for example, this commsat is actually providing us a communication link back to uh, Kerbal Space Center. So, uh, just because of this one antenna. And every single one of the probes has one of the nice long antennas on it. This is the... I really, really, really wanted this when we first started. Communitron 32. That's the uh, the nice one. Yep, Communitron 32, right there. Okay, so there's the main probe, and it has all the RCS on it. It also has fuel tank and a small rocket on it. That has, I think, seven. Yeah, 714 meter, meters per second of delta V, which is fairly decent for what we're going to be doing with it. Um, we're just going to be uh, using this and all the monopropellant, depending on whether or not this runs out, uh, to position these probes. And these probes are going to be generally stationary with respect to each other. So, for example, like we have these geostationary uh, satellites here, they are they should not be moving with respect to one another. So this one should be moving and this one should move the same distance this way. So that's what I want to do on Duna. So let's actually, oops, sorry about all the movement. Let's head to Duna here. I have nothing at Duna. So what I want to do is do polar orbits uh, and follow generally the same arc in the polar orbit uh, with each one of these uh, probes. And there's four of them, three of which will be orbiting and then the fourth main body will orbit as well. And that will be our communications uh, network with the surface of Duna in a polar orientation. So if we ever land on Duna, we're going to have to do it 
generally in a, a hemisphere, not along an equator. That's one of the, the main disadvantages to that system specifically. Uh, but, but, what's really nice about it is, let's go back to here, the probes themselves, they all have scanning equipment on them. So this is the multi-spectral sensor that comes from, I forget what mod this is, ScanSat or something like that, yeah, one of those. Uh, same with this one, this is the altimetry sensor, and this is the survey unit from Keithane, so we actually can find Keithane deposits on, uh, what is that, Duna, <laughs> can't speak today. And as the planet rotates under us, uh, we will be getting new data every single time, so we'll have a nice big swath of land that we'll be covering with each one of these probes. Each one of the probes has a radiator, a solar panel, um, an antenna, a rechargeable battery, and their respective equipment. So this and this allow these two satellites to talk to each other to create a, uh, a satellite network, so for mapping. So this guy and this guy will share data together, which is really nice. Um, and the Keithane sensor is just so we can uh, know where Keithane deposits are on that surface. So, what's this last probe? Well, this last probe is a lander. And I'm not really sure how well it's going to work. That's why I said I think I might do another mission up here. Uh, mostly because... Oh, wait. I think we might be running out of... Yep, we're losing electric charge. Too much talking. Too much talking. Let's extend these, extend that one, extend, and extend. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. So that's, uh, all these are on our main probe here. But yeah, so this lander, <laughs> not entirely sure how well it's going to work. Um, and I just noticed that these antennas are facing right into the solar panel. So every single time we launch one of these uh, and we activate the antenna on it, we're going to need to close that respective solar panel for a second. But yeah, this lander has a sensor package, which has the seismic data, pressure data, gravity, and temperature all built in. Uh, and also the atmospheric sensor package, which can't be activated without being in an atmosphere. Normal. It has a solar panel and, and a computer on it and the radiator, of course. But it's very, very minimal. But what I have to do is actually position every single one of these uh, drones or these uh, satellites by moving the main probe and then detaching, decoupling them. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, we're going to be making. A few or quite a few orbital changes with the main rig here and then for the last one we're going to need to do more or less a what's the opposite of prograde <laughs> anyways uh, we're gonna need to burn away from our direction and kind of make a a um, a descending descending trajectory uh, release the probe and then bring up our periaps again so that we are in a orbital trajectory again with the main probe because this is what's communicating back to Kerbin uh, and allowing all of this to work because of our remote tech 2 mod so you need to have communication at all times so enough talking let's go ahead and oops let's go back to us let's make a burn towards Duna so we're gonna need to make some sort of maneuver. Bloop. Oh, a little bit more. I'll do this. Okay. And I want to kind of turn it. I think right about there should be good for now. And we're going to do this. Set as target. Oop. I hate that. The nodes are just very difficult to handle. Here we go. Let's go ahead and expand this one. Boop. Okay. And that's a little bit off. So, uh, like I said, we, we might have to use a little bit more uh, fuel here than I originally intentioned. 
Uh, but adjusting our trajectory inwards will actually allow us to move ourselves uh, more to the left here in an intercept. So there's a chance that we might be able to finagle this to become an intercept if we keep on moving this node a little bit more and more towards the center. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, see. And oh, oh, we're just about there. I think I lost the node yet. I did. And oh, oh. Let's see how far away they are. Very, very close. Very, very, very close. We're going to need to move it a little bit more inwards. And we might be getting a good intercept very, very soon. There it is. Cool. Oops. Awesome, right? Oh, there it goes. Okay. So 1,093 meters per second of delta V. We can definitely handle that. Uh, it's not going to be a 26 second burn. I don't know why it's estimating it to that. Let's go ahead and get ourselves oriented for that one. And we'll jump ahead to do the burn. It will be on the dark side, so um, it's going to be not too eventful for you guys, but let's at least get ourselves on an orbit, or sorry, on a trajectory to Duna in this episode, and then uh, we'll probably jump back to it in the future, because I think it's like a 60-day travel, maybe 70 days to get there, I don't really remember. We can take a look as soon as we're done with the burn, though. Let's go ahead and jump time. And right about there. I think that's a good place for us to be. Oh yeah. It's going to take more than that. Definitely more than that. Cool. Let's wait a few more seconds. Do, 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 do. Really, really dark. I do apologize. There we go. We're on our way. I'm burning towards our... Prograde here. Prograde? Retrograde. That's what the word I was looking for was. No, I want to go towards node. There we go. And I don't trust this anymore. As you can tell, it's kind of messing us up. We're wiggling around a little bit. 40 seconds left in the burn. Should be bringing our orbit out to here. Twenty-three seconds remaining. And then we'll just do it by eye. There we go, there's our escape. And then this is when the by eye part comes in. Okay. Okay. There we go. We might have overshot. That's the, uh, the only problem I'm having here. Uh, yep, we're overshooting. So let's go ahead and actually let's just use RCS now. Oop. Don't want RCS. Oh, I do want on RCS on. <laughs> Am I using too much? Eh, not that bad. I just didn't feel like spinning us around. And we might be getting an intercept very, very soon. Come on. It's 62 days. It'll be probably about 65 days by the time we get this nice intercept. Come on, come on. It's thinking. Oh wait, we're, we're losing it. We're losing it here. Okay, so we're going to have to make an adjustment, and I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll see you guys after. All right, we're back. And I just, it only took me a few minutes to change our orbit, finagle it here and there, 
And we have an intercept with a periaps of 1.6 million meters. So, yeah. It's going to be quite a while. I also set up our Communitron 8888 to be pointing uh, back at uh, Minmus. Minmus is basically our target for uh, long-range communication. Uh, that's where all our long-range communication satellites are. So that's pointing at Minmus. So for whenever it gets out of the uh, atmosphere here, it's not atmosphere, the, the system here, and gets far enough away for uh, this uh, satellite to kind of target Minmus correctly, we'll be able to uh, move it around again. But we're actually going to be in signal blackout for quite some time. So it's going to be very, very interesting. So also I did a little bit of inventory here. There is a little bit of fuel left in this tank, so at, uh, let's see, just barely enough for uh, little maneuvers, 894 meters per second of delta V. Uh, in this tank, with uh, the low profile engine, 1500, and this one up here, 736 meters per second. So that's actually a lot of delta V. I think we're easily going to be able to deploy our probes whenever we need to. But for now, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, that was quite a... This is going to be quite a fun mission when we get to it. It's going to be 62 days away. We'll join him. And uh, this is our launch window for Kerbin. And this is our, our periaps for the sun probe, which we had planned on potentially uh, doing lots and lots of science at this time with the sun probe. It's been quite a while since we sent that one up. The Moho probe is eight days away, so in between, I think we're going to go back and uh, stock the lab with some stuff and add some attachments. Uh, we'll do a a uh, science run on Kerbin. We want to get as much of the atmospheric data as possible. We also would like to uh, probably place a lab in the water to start whatever that process is. There's a lot of cool stuff I haven't touched yet, and I also want to do uh, some sat map stuff for Kerbin as well so we can get a really cool topographical map and everything. Uh, we need to still build a new shuttle and test it with uh, with satellites and that's I'm assuming would be a really really great time to do uh, setting up our sat map uh, satellites so I think that's going to be very very soon so hopefully you guys are excited for the new episodes thank you all for watching and I'll see you Next time!